Okay, so uh, welcome back. In this lecture, uh, I'm going to discuss how we can use the result files uh, generated by the cycle file because uh, now we are we can uh, make a Scipy five, Scipy experiment. We can collect data, but it automatically generates a result file, and uh, we want to know how we can use uh, how we can make that result file ready for our next step. So uh, I will explain how, uh, what the result file is and where we can find that and what columns we need in the result file and how we can aggregate data from different participants into just one file. All right, so as you might have noticed, when participants uh, finish uh, your experiment, the PsychoPy automatically generates a folder uh, called data. So this folder is uh, in the same folder you have saved your PsychoPy and Excel files. If you go into this folder, you can find uh, at least three uh, files. One of them has CSV comma separated value extension. So that's the result file and that's the file that we are going to discuss. So this file contains participants' responses and information. And as I say, this uh, data folder uh, is found in the same folder where you have saved your PsychoPy file. So something more importantly is that you uh, should be very neat uh, in experimental research. So uh, uh, in our field, I mean, with uh, respect to PsychoPy, uh, first try to start creating a folder somewhere in your computer uh, and rename it your project's name. Uh, and then inside the folder, save your PsychoPy file, save your input Excel file, which uh, you will use uh, as a loop in the PsychoPy file, and any other images and sounds that you want to use in your experiment. So everything should be in this folder. Uh, you don't need any other folders inside this folder. And after PsychoPy generates data folder for each participant, you should only keep the CSV files inside this folder. So get rid of the remaining files, only keep CSV files for your um, further, I mean, later uh, work. And uh, the result file of new participants will be added to this data folder automatically. So if you want to collect data from 10 participants, you should have 10 CSV files inside this data folder. So uh, imagine that we have uh, collected data from these 10 participants and we open each file, uh, each result file. So let me do that here. I have done it before. So this is a sample result file from a participant so you can see that it has a lot of columns here so it's important for us to know which columns we should uh, keep and which columns we should get rid of so as a rule of thumb uh, first of all you should <coughs> you must know uh, which participant has done this experiment by which participant I do not mean the name of the participant maybe you uh, give them a random code. Uh, so you definitely want to keep this, uh, let's say, column, uh, participant column, for example, here it's P3. So you need this column. You can see the session column, date column, experiment name column, uh, uh, some frame rates. So these are uh, usually un unnecessary columns. You can simply get rid of them by uh, deleting these columns. So the other columns that uh, you need to keep uh, are the index and item number columns. 
so for sure we need item numbers and uh, we definitely need uh, so these are the columns that are needed that are required in all uh, <coughs> linguistics research studies uh, from now on it varies from one experiment to another for example this is a file generated uh, uh, for a self-paced reading task so if you have a priming experiment maybe this file uh, is different but again you definitely need index item number and participant columns so what other files uh, what other columns do we need so uh, generally uh, we need all the reaction times and all the responses uh, for the main phase of the study. By main phase, I mean uh, the phase after the practice stage and instruction stage. We don't need uh, the amount of time that participants has uh, spent on reading this, the instruction, or we don't need, uh, for example, the amount of time that has taken uh, for them to press the space bar uh, for moving uh, to uh, the next stage after instruction but we definitely need uh, the amount of time that has taken for them to press the space bar for reading these words or we need <coughs> to sorry we need to uh, save the column uh, which uh, states which mentions the uh, participants responses uh, to a set of questions so that's why for example in self-based reading task uh, so uh, let's look at the header we have item type yes we definitely need this column we have uh, this plus uh, sign it is not important to us we definitely need these words and uh, of course the question so let's keep them I just uh, highlight them in yellow. So, uh, what is it? This is introduction started, which uh, is the uh, time where they start to read the instruction. So, it is not necessary. And uh, this is the column where they stopped reading the introduction. Again, it is not needed. We usually uh, need the columns. Uh, with a header .rt extension. So .rt uh, means the reaction time. So let's uh, look for those columns. So this is not, this is uh, not, uh, so this is definitely not the one. And uh, yeah, as you can see here, we have dot rt for word one word one response dot rt it means that the reaction time for reading the first word and then we have uh, not this one uh it goes uh up to here it, this is the reaction time for the second word again here uh you don't have that uh so here uh, you have the reaction time for the third word and you continue uh, Yeah, again here. It's the reaction time for reading the fourth word and this goes on to the end just for the matter of time. I don't want to uh, Go to the uh, through the remaining ones uh, and then if there is a correct response column Definitely we need that So I can see that uh, uh, This is uh, Word one response dot they, they are usually they usually have uh, dot cor Correct extension. So we need this column. Of course uh, this column uh, the researcher has uh, uh, redundant redundantly uh save that but anyway because it is uh it has dot cor correct extension we should keep that the rest of the columns uh 
are usually unnecessary uh, which are in white and uh, we don't need them uh, for example in our case which is a self-paced reading so uh, we need the correct uh, the, uh, the response to the question which comes at the end of the self-paced reading so uh, this is the uh, column that saves the uh, participants responses and this is the column uh, which saves the reaction time uh, for answering to those questions which is very important to, to us the rest of the columns are uh, redundant and uh, what happens is that uh, you should get rid of these columns you can do that in python then you have i don't know imagine that you have 20 or 30 or even 60 participants so doing that manually is very uh, time consuming uh, but because we don't want to go through uh, programming uh, let's uh, remove them manually uh, we just select the columns that we don't want and we remove the uh, let's say uh, content yeah for example here we have some content uh, which is unnecessary we remove that and yeah you can do the uh, you can do for the uh, remaining uh, yeah so for example here yeah we should do that manually for this course but later on uh, if we take some advanced courses you will learn how to do it using uh, python all right uh, and then we should uh, bring everything next to each other so for example here i can select these columns and i can cut them from here and i can paste them here to just make everything neat and uh, yeah so after doing that your excel file is ready for analysis but the point is that because uh, you have uh, for each participant you have a separate excel file uh, you should do the same thing for each excel file and then at the end uh, you copy and paste the contents of each excel file on top of each other in a new file and uh, that's a uh, uh, that's your master uh, data set so it's a data set uh, for uh, which uh, contains the results of all participants in one file because for a statistical analysis we need a master data set we don't need separate files so uh, the process is that you uh, get rid of unnecessary columns in each participant's result file and then uh put everything together uh, on, uh in a new file called master data set yeah and then uh, i can skip these slides because i have uh, uh told you i have explained in the uh, uh excel file yeah and this uh, diagram as you can see is that uh says that okay uh, you have uh, participant one result file participant two result file and participant n result file you should make each file ready you should get rid of unnecessary columns you should uh, make them clean and then you uh, aggregate them in a you copy and paste the content of each file in a new uh, excel file which is called uh, master data set or uh, I don't know master spreadsheet or big data and then you do your statistical analysis on this uh, master file uh, we we are not going to uh, go through stats again if you are interested in uh, learning how to uh, do a statistical analysis on linguistics data you can take uh, more advanced courses all right 
So now we learned how to uh, make our data ready, collected data ready for analysis. So from the very beginning, we learned how to make exper uh, experiments in uh, PsychoPy. We learned how to make input files, for example, uh, input Excel file in the loop. And then we learned how to generate the result file for each participant, where uh, we should find it, and uh, what changes we should make on the result file of each participant. And finally, how to aggregate data collected from participants into one big file. All right, I think you have enjoyed this uh, final lecture, and um, good luck.